Ladies and gentlemen, John Panette! <laughs> to be here. Uh, I went to the gym today. <laughs> listen first. First listen. Since February, I've been going to the gym five or six days a week. I don't like it. I go because I want to be healthier. I have such a long road ahead of me. I, I lost a hundred pounds and, and people say to me, wow, we can really see it in your face. <laughs> big was my head before I started this journey? Apparently, I was the Kool-Aid man. Nobody ever said anything to me. Oh, yeah, Kool-Aid's here. That's John. His head's the size of a manhole cover. We don't talk about it, though. Shh. And it's just, it's not like I'm getting back in shape. Oh, getting back in shape? No, I never was in shape. So in February, I hired a trainer. I've had many since then. Some quit, some turned to drugs and alcohol. One trainer quit the business and opened up a candy store. Seriously, he makes the best maple walnut fudge I've ever tasted. So I'm not just big, I'm a carrier. People get big around me. Then the trainer says to me, you know, you're tired now, you're a little sore from working out, but once you start, you get addicted. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think I can quit this gym stuff anytime I want. I got a lot of willpower. <laughs> See that guy with the muscles over there? That's not gonna be me. They're never gonna find me in the exercise wing of Betty Ford. I can't stop! I wanna stop, but I can't stop. One trainer told me to loosen me up. He wanted me to like walk across the gym. He said, do this. This is called the soldier's walk. He made me do this across a gym full of people. This is a soldier's walk? This is not, you're making this up. What is there, a gay Nazi brigade out there we don't know about? This is the springtime for Hitler number from the producers. This is not a military thing. Then he says to me, give me a sit up. I said, oh, nay, nay. I, I don't do ups. I told him that when I signed up, I don't do ups. I do downs. Sit down, lay down. Blackjack, I'll double down. Give me a cheeseburger, I'll wolf it down. Put on a little music, I'll boogie down. But I don't do ups. Ups defy gravity. Gravity is a law. I obey the law. So, I, I see people at the gym and, and I just don't think healthy. I, I'm on, the, I do this machine. Do you know this horrible machine? I don't know the name of it. I call it the horrible machine. I started in February, I could do five minutes, but I would have to cry for two and a half of those minutes. People don't want to see that at the gym. They complain, take him off that machine. He's crying. Now I can do 45 minutes and it's a real miracle. But, oh, okay. yeah, and I'm a pleasure to be around too. I see other people working out on the machines. They're thinking, what machine am I gonna do next? Maybe I'll do weights. And I'm thinking if I do 45 minutes and live, I'm gonna have raviolis and a nap. <laughs> so, so the last 15 minutes is a chant. Raviolis and a nap, raviolis and a nap. 
I'm like this on the machine. The trainer comes by and says, I see you're sweating. That's great. You know, you're burning fat. Oh, good. I hope it's a control burn. Because if this baby goes up all at once, there's going to be a mushroom cloud over this gym. I've gone to nutritionist. It's tough to eat well on the road. There's a lot of late night eating. And uh, it's, I went to one nutritionist. I walk into his office, he says, well, the good news is you can have all the salads you want. Whew. That is good news. I was nervous. I came in here thinking, please God, anything, don't take away my salad. How will I live without mixed greens? You mean I can have all the radicchio I want? Stop, I'm getting a chubby. He wanted me to eat salad as the food. Salad's not food, salad comes with the food. You go out, you order a steak, what do they do? They bring you a salad. They don't even charge you for it because it ain't worth anything, because it ain't food. Salad is a promissory note that food will soon arrive. I never learned to think of salad as food. If I see a salad, I go, something good is gonna happen soon. I'll wait right here. And, and I've been on diets for over 20 years, off and on. And every part of a diet has been salad. So I see a salad and there's not a lot of joy there. I go, oh good, a salad. What would you like on your salad? haagen -Dazs. Melt the haagen to look like ranch. Just do it. My nutritionist said, how about steamed vegetables? That's heated salad. I don't want that either. One nutritionist recommended sushi. Sushi is high in protein, low in calories. There are some wonderful Japanese dishes. Japanese food has great aesthetics, great presentation, but sushi, it's wrapped in seaweed. Now that's ocean salad. I'm not eating that. And you're not supposed to eat seaweed. I picked that out of the crack of my ass at the beach. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to eat that. I never went to the beach and went, hey honey, we got sandwiches here, hold on. What are you getting pizza for? I hope that's not how it's harvested. Sumo wrestlers up and down the beach at Osaka. I'm a fool now. I'm a coming in. I went to an herbalist. Nice lady. This herbalist lady, she said to me, uh, are you a vegetarian? Not in the strictest definition. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be a vegetarian. Like, I don't eat veal, but he grows up. <laughs> I'll kill him on the front lawn. He's gotta go. Actually, I don't eat veal because it gave me nightmares. I, I dreamt the mother cow came into the restaurant while I was eating veal parmesan. She'd walk in, have you seen Timmy? <laughs> I'll help you look for him. Let me get a doggy bag. So, no veal. And I used to love lamb. Lamb chops, yido's my favorite. Oh, lamb, mm. My friend owns a farm. I go up to the farm, he has livestock. He gives me a baby lamb to hold. It falls asleep in my arms. I love lamb. He says to me, it fell asleep. It trusts you. It has very poor judgment. Then I bit it right in the ass. <laughs> no, I'm holding this lamb knowing I'm never gonna have lamb again. And he said, would you like to see the cows now? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I'll see them at McDonald's. Can't buddy up to everybody at once. This herbalist told me, she said, for the first month I want you to juice. To juice. I don't know what that means. Juice is not a verb. What do you want me to do? She wanted me to just have juice. She sold me a juicer. I thought it was a wood chipper. 
you can juice stuff I didn't know had juice in it. And I didn't do well on just juice. Third day, I juiced a ham. She called me up, how you doing? I'm juicing. Let me get this Krispy Kreme in here. We'll be good to go. And then she said to me, I bet you have a block colon. Now, horrible visuals came to mind. I'm thinking, how are we gonna unblock this bad boy? Here, attach this to your garden hose. Hey, I have neighbors. I'll, I'll get a letter from the homeowners association. Please do not clean your colon on front lawn. Signed, all of us. Uh, she said, it's very easy to cleanse your colon. She said, you're juicing, right? Yeah. Take these herbs, put them in your juice three times a day. After a month, your colon will be clean. I don't know what was in the herbs, but I called her an hour and a half later from the bathroom. Hey, crazy lady. I'm sending back the rest of the herbs. Mission accomplished. My colon is clean. I swallowed a quarter when I was seven. $50 came out. My ass hit the jackpot. When I walk, I whistle now. Sounds like I have Zamfir, master of the pan flute in my ass. I tried the low carb thing. Now, people have gone low carb hysterical. I understand I eat way too many carbs. A pasta, bread, a big problem for me. And I really have to cut back. But people think in LA, we're like, they're all skinny. You know, you eat a piece of bread. <gasps> what? What? <laughs> if this stuff were that bad for you, I would have been dead 10 years ago. Trust me. Relax. <laughs> and I tried the low carb bread. Have you tried it? It's horrible. I tasted it. I thought the wrapper was still on. It's not like it went bad. It never went good. They have, I can't believe it's not butter. They should call it, this ain't bread. Cause it looks like bread, but it has no other properties of bread. I said, you know what, I'll butter it. That'll make it better. Butter won't go on it. It slides right off. The butter's like, where are you putting me? <laughs> Jam and jelly beads up and falls off it. Did they scotch guard this at the factory? You know what I'll do? It's okay, I'll toast it. I'll make a sandwich, I'll toast it. It's better when you toast it. It doesn't toast. You can't toast it. I'm out in the garage with a blowtorch. It's absorbing the heat like a space shuttle tire. How does this break down in your system if you can't toast it? They're gonna dig me up in 5,000 years ago. Oh. He was on that low carb thing. See that disc? We've seen a lot of these. The Atkins diet, I mean, there's some people that have had a lot of success with the Atkins diet. It, it just didn't work for me. They said, after a week, you won't have any carb cravings. No. I was hallucinating after a week. Every time the doorbell rang, I thought it was Pizza Hut. Come to save my ass. Is that them? I had carb cravings. When you drive by a bakery and you jump out of a moving vehicle, that's called a craving. And I had horrible nightmares. I dreamt Dr. Phil was outside my house. John, come out here and exercise. You can't be big if your lifestyle won't allow it. Get off my lawn. John, come out here and talk to me because it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. I'm calling the cops. I've never been like adventurous either. Although people have always asked me to go on adventures, rides, pursuits, amusements, journeys to see what will happen to me. That's their fun. My whole life, people have said to me, John, you have to come along. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I have trouble saying no. I say nay, nay, it's easier for me. Every year I get a call, John, we're going skiing. 
people want to see me ski. John's funny. He's funny to hang around with. Let's put skis on him. And he'll be funnier. I went skiing a few years ago. I wasn't gonna ski. I just want to see the mountains, the change of seasons. I wasn't gonna ski. They gave me tequila. I don't drink tequila anymore. Cause it makes me ski. Apparently after the fifth shot, I demand my skis. Where's my skis? I could barely stand, they put skis on me. They rented me skis. They bought me a ski suit. It was white. It didn't flatter me. I look like an avalanche from the top of the mountain. Why are they evacuating that village over there? Now, it was my first time skiing. So you'd think my first time, take me to the little slope, wee. Plus, I'm too drunk to stand. Let's not take him to the little slope. They took me up to Mount Son of a Bitch. And they threw me off that mountain. I didn't ski anything. I fell down a mountain. I don't even know where the skis went. I had to pay for the skis because I never found them. I went to the ski rental place. They said, where are the skis? Up there. I fell down a mountain. I got to the bottom of the mountain, a lifeless wreck covered in snow. A little kid walks up to me crying. Frosty's dead. Frosty's dead. Now other children are gathered round and they're horrified. Don't be dead, Frosty, they're saying. I had to get up. If I get up, these kids will believe in Santa till they're 27. There must have been some magic. Yay, Frosty, open the ambulance door. Frosty's gonna need Percocets and a Pez dispenser. For when they placed it on his head, happy birthday. Water skiing, I thought, would be okay. Because it's water, it's soft. Nay, nay, not at 40 miles an hour, it's like cement. And I can stand up on the skis. But then the boat pulled me. That's when things started to go wrong. It was like snorkeling underwater really fast. I heard a barracuda go, what the hell was that? And I water ski mostly with my face and I would bob my head out of the water periodically, you know, to scream for help. It was an inaudible scream. It came out like, Aah! killer whales are following. They're curious and a little concerned. Well, everybody's here, who's that? He doesn't look like us, but he sure sounds like us in pain. Let him go, he's just a baby! My friends thought I was being funny. John, you were so funny when you were bobbing your head out of the water. I was laughing, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe either, you should have stopped the boat. Parasailing, nay, nay. They paradrag my ass all over the Pacific. The next time we go parasailing, turn around. If I'm not up in the air waving, stop the bow. I was picked up by a fishing trawler. They were packing me in ice when they found me. John, we're going bungee jumping. Nay, nay. John, are you afraid the bungee's gonna snap? No, I know the bungee's gonna snap. <laughs> oh, the bungee can't snap. It's a space-age polymer. Good, I'll take the whole bridge with me. Everybody will die. <laughs> Everybody on the bridge at once. Nay, nay! 
My, fa my favorite little journey was whitewater rafting. Have you been? If you haven't been, just take an ice cold shower for a day and hit yourself with a bag of rocks. <laughs> Call it whitewater rocking. It's the same thing. We went to the Grand Canyon whitewater rafting thing. We took mules down the canyon. My mule said, nay, nay. <laughs> Everybody got way ahead of me and I'm screaming, hold on, mine's not breathing. Don't you die on me, you son of a bitch. Clear. Just see me on the front of PETA magazine. Now I'm carrying the mule like Shrek. That's not very nice. It's just a donkey. They take me to a raging river and they tell me to get in a boat, but there's not a boat there. It's just a rubber thingy. When the boat would sink, they would put one of these out until a real boat came and got you. If it doesn't have a buffet and a casino, it ain't seaworthy. Uh, people did this with such joy and it was dangerous. Nobody cared but me. One guy flies out of the boat. It's a lot of fun! We drag him back in and he's hit his head. He's still happy. Just see that, huh? Yeah. You got a little blood here. Oh yeah, jeez, that was fun though, huh? Yeah. Don't let me fall asleep, all right? I'm gonna have a zone bar, I'm fine. Jeez, that was fun. It good to have fun. I'm at the front of the boat going, can we bang against the rocks one more time? I still have cartilage left in my right knee. And are we gonna swing back around because I left one of my balls on the rock over there? Oh, an eagle has it, forget about it. They see a ball, they swoop right in. My family likes to take me on little adventures. They took me to Hershey Park. It's an amusement park. There's Nay Nay rides at the amusement park. It was a loop coaster. Nay Nay. I don't loop. I've done the math. I half loop and gravity says Nay Nay. There's a safety bar. Nay Nay. There's a safety bar because it ain't safe. It's really a hold on to this or you're gonna die bar. In Hershey, Pennsylvania, they're running around on the rides. They found me in the gift shop. I thought I was in Willy Wonka's factory. Come with me and you'll see a world of sheer imagination. You eat a half a case of Reese's, you will sing Uncle Lumpus. <laughs> My nieces and nephews took me to a water park. I thought that would be okay. It's just water, I love to swim, but there were horrible nay nay rides. There was a giant slide, it was 20 stories high. No elevator, you have to walk. Which pissed me off, it's $35 to get in, build an elevator, you should carry me up there. I'm in flip flops and a Speedo and I'm walking up this thing. Let's not visualize that, let's just move on, yeah. There you go. That'll keep you up at night. Yeah. <laughs> if you get lucky tonight, think of me. <laughs> Honey, hold on. I need another Viagra. I, uh... <laughs> and you walk up this slide and people yell at you if you don't walk fast enough. I'm in no mood for that. Listen, I will fart and you will disintegrate before you hit the ground. Do I look happy up here? I get to the top of the slide and it's not a slide and I have slid. When you slide, you go wee. This is not what happened. I went, ah, that's not a slide, that's a drop. At no point did my ass touch slide. If you reach around and your ass is not touching slide, that's a free fall. You need a parachute and you're gonna die. I'm falling, I see my family walking up. It's not a slide! and I hit the water. Oh God, those people shouldn't have been there. I pop out of the water, I hear, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Like I need this on my vacation. 
The next ride is called the giant tube. Now it's a medium tube at best. And I found out when I get nervous, I swell. You see people come out of the tubes, they plop ever so gently. Oh, plop, wee. This is not what happened to me. I built up pressure. I shot across the pool. You know, like in Free Willy, where Willy jumps over the kid? I cleared seven kids. There were some tourists here from Japan. God bless them, I made their vacation. They thought it was a show. Oh, he's like a fear weary. They were very nice, but all afternoon. You take another picture. Do again. Put my son on your back. Yoshi, get on the free weary. One more picture, and then I gotta go. I have video of it. I'm flying across the pool. I dubbed the soundtrack from Free Willy into it. So you see me flying, you hear that Michael Jackson song from the movie? Hold me like the river Jordan And I will then say to thee, you are my friend <laughs> The last ride at the water park was a medium slide, my butt touch slide. That was good. But the pool was too short. I didn't even go in the pool. I hydroplaned across it. I went through the fence out into the parking lot. And I mean way out there, H-I-J. Please God, let me stop. I crawl back up to the gate, they want me to pay to get in again. I said, listen, I'm in a Speedo. You see a wallet anywhere? He said, I don't even see the Speedo. He said, nay, nay, and then he quit. In January, I worked in London. It was my first time working there, and the people were wonderful. Uh, I, I had a good time. I got to be a tourist for a few days. And I'm a big history buff, so London, very, so rich in history. Uh, the castles, the museums. There's a lot of walking if you're a tourist in London. Didn't have to go to the gym, because you walk. Everybody, and you know what, the English, I don't know, you can just walk there. It's about 100 miles, I don't know. I went to the British Museum. I was there for nine hours. Oh, what an amazing cultural experience. No, I got lost. You can't get out. It's too big. And they give you these directions. How do you get out of here? I've been here for hours. Well, just go down to the ancient Greek exhibit and take a left at Lord Elgin's tablets. If you pass the Rosetta Stone, you've gone too far. Well, how do you get out of here? People from England were lost. They were coming up to me. Excuse me, sir, have you seen the exit? Some of the little ones are starting to give up hope. We went to Windsor Castle, the, drop, the bus drops you off at the front lawn. You know how big the lawn of a castle is? <laughs> the purpose of the lawn is so that in days of yore, when armies would invade, they would give up before they got across the lawn. <laughs> they invaded from France for hundreds of years, they never got across that lawn, they'd get halfway and go, oh. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> I can't even see the castle from here. I'm going back to Calais. When I went to England, I was told that the food was not that good. I know I talk a lot about food in my act, but I also realize that it's not everything in life. The food's not good, that's okay. I'll have a great time anyways. That being said, I mean, there was a few problems with the food. First of all, England's expensive. It makes Disney World look like a non-profit organization. <laughs> I went over there with some other comics and we went to dinner to a nice restaurant. The bill was $700. That check comes to the table. My friends become astronomers. <laughs> I was, 
We stayed at a very nice hotel, but it was closed in between lunch and dinner. So there's uh, that no man's land where you can't get any food. So I walk in after walking nine hours and I'm starving and they said, we have tea. <laughs> now I like green tea. They said, we have sandwiches with the tea. Okay. <laughs> they served me tea sandwiches. Somebody already ate most of mine. And this one just has cucumber in it. That's pickle, that comes on the side of the sandwich. Take this back and put a sandwich in it. Then they bring me a scone thingy, and it was good. Put jelly and, and butter on it. Bring 37 of these. You don't eat much around here, do you? I thought breakfast, breakfast would be okay. <laughs> I ordered oatmeal. They said, we don't have oatmeal, we do have porridge. Porridge, mm. <laughs> Have you tried porridge? That's what they used to give out in the Charles Dickens workhouses. <laughs> Please, sir, I want some more. Porridge, that was Goldilocks and the Three Bears porridge. Remember Goldilocks said, hot or cold, I ain't eating this shit. <laughs> I didn't like the porridge. Some people love it and that's okay. I ordered a bacon and egg sandwich. Sounds okay, right? But the bacon in England, it's all wrong. Now I know bacon. <laughs> I think you know I know bacon. It was about this thick and it wasn't cooked properly. When I look at something and go, you know what? That's not healthy. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> so I wouldn't eat the bacon and egg sandwich. I ate the side dish with it. A side dish in the morning for breakfast. Hash browns, home fries, perhaps fresh fruit. Nay, nay. They give you beans in the morning in England. Oh good, let's start me off in the morning. <laughs> Empty stomach, cup of black coffee and some beans. <laughs> now let's walk me around London for a little while. Get me all churned up. Put me in a taxi and see what happens. I blew the doors off a taxi. They thought it was a bombing. I heard, ah, ah, ah. The driver slumped over the wheel with the sound the gas made. He thought he had been shot. Then I heard, if he farts again, shoot on my command. What are you giving me beans for? My ass is now considered a weapon of mass destruction. Later, after the bean incident, we had uh, Indian food. We went to an Indian restaurant. The people were very nice. They told me, though, this is Vandalo. I do not think you know what it is. It is not like tandoori. It is, tandoori is mild, but this is much hotter than I think that you probably... <laughs> the curry chicken ran through me like a bullet train. I wasn't at the table five minutes. Where's the bathroom? Way over there, huh? Here's my credit card. I'm gonna be a while. I don't think I can pucker my butt cheeks together any more than this. John, are you okay? Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Please do not let me go in this lobby. I will get a call from the American Embassy. <laughs> Mr. Panett, you do know these people are our allies. I, oh, I, what are they giving me the Indian phone for? <laughs> and there was a long line for the bathroom. They served all the curry at once. They shouldn't do that. They should stagger it. You could hear Indian music coming from the bathroom. Sitar, that's the sound of flame shooting out of your ass. I look like the Batmobile. Uh, moving on to France. I worked in France about five years ago. I did a movie there. 
Panette is actually a French name. Uh, my ancestry is French and Irish. My stomach is Italian. <laughs> but having a French name in France, they don't care. Lumiere was not there when I got off the plane. Be August, be August. No. I still enjoyed France and I would go again. And the food was amazing. Their reckless disregard for how bad butter is for you never failed to impress me. They give you cheese a lot though. I had cheese every meal for a week. I didn't do well with that. What could we have for you? Some more fromage. I don't want any more cheese. I'm pounding Metamucil in beer stein. You're giving me cheese. I would like to go to the bathroom this millennium. Some of the French cooking can be very different. I went to the Hotel Nagresco. Oh, you have to go to the Hotel Nagresco. Very limited menu. One, they had a pigeon. That's a flying rat. Why are you charging a hundred bucks for a flying rat? So some of it's very different. And I was on a movie set most of the time and there's catering on a movie set. And we would have breakfast, but in France they don't really have breakfast. They have like a croissant. That's it. There's a box of croissants, everybody grabs one and it disappears and breakfast is gone. Like you go, where's breakfast? Uh, what do you mean it's over? They have a croissant and a cup of coffee, that's breakfast. I have a croissant and a cup of coffee on the way to breakfast, where's breakfast? <laughs> breakfast is called petit dejeuner, which means no food till noon. And the caterer on the set, it was like a mom and pop catering thing. And they would have one entree for 40 people. And sometimes they would serve rabbit. 40 people are coming over to your house. You go, everybody likes rabbit, right? I was horrified. And it wasn't rabbit disguised as chicken. It left nothing to the imagination. It's a little bunny. A little bunny's chicken. Can't do that. And you know, they serve like a whole fish. It just, I, I just wasn't into it. I was eating bread, you know, which is really good for me. Little bread, little cheese. <laughs> we, uh, we would go out on the weekends and uh, we went on a wine tasting. And I went with a French crew and I went, I went with an attitude. You know, I drink tequila. These people can drink wine for 12 hours and drive a school bus. <laughs> After the second hour, the subtle differences in the wine started to elude me. Red, white, Boone's Farm apple. They're like, which one did you like better, the Magos, the Letos? I don't remember getting in the car. I remember sitting on top of a piano, smoking. I don't smoke. Quand je suis dans tes voies, je vois les vies rouler. Later that afternoon, I wound up at a nude beach. Let me tell you the nude beach story. <laughs> I technically wasn't naked, I was covered in sunblock. It was that sunblock 50 and it doesn't rub in so I look like a car that hadn't been buffed out. <laughs> and you have to put sunblock everywhere. Everywhere. I found out there's a fine line between rubbing lotion on yourself and rubbing yourself with lotion. I think I crossed that line. We're in the south of France and on the weekends we had off, as I said. So we go to an Italian restaurant in the south of France. And, and I love Italian food. For three weeks I've been saying, we have to go to Italian food. Finally we go to an Italian restaurant. And somebody that's been there for three weeks listening to me, oh, I love Italian food, it's my favorite, says, next week we should go to Italy. Well, we're working, we can. We don't have time to fly to Italy. Oh no, it's a 45 minute drive from here. Oh, it is. Well, get in the car! 45 minute drive! We're down the street from the motherland! Took me 11 minutes! An egg on body, she was so naughty! 
I could have ran it in 45. I speak a little Italian too. I know how to say sono affamato. It means feed me, I'm hungry. I can say it in 27 languages. I can write it in hieroglyphics if I have to. If I go back in a time machine, I want my ass covered. And, and in Italy, if you speak a little Italian, they, they like to help you. They kind of got a kick out of me. In France, you have to speak French perfectly. I stayed in a nice hotel in France, and I was like, excuse me, do you know I can get breakfast? Je ne comprends pas, monsieur. You know what I'm saying, you little bastard. You're watching CNN in English. Where's breakfast? So. So I can, so I, we went to this little, little restaurant and the waiter was the owner, his name was Luigi. And he got a kick out of me saying, sono affamato, hey, look at you, huh? Son of a bitch, he's a sono affamato. Giuseppe, come in here. Say it to Giuseppe, say it. Sono affamato, hey, look at you, huh? We're gonna feed you, you're gonna explore all over the wall. And, you know what else I could say? I could say I'm dying of hunger. They love that. Giuseppe, morta de fame. I'm a morta de fame. I don't want to smother a seal like this. Morta de fame. He said, I don't think you're more than the fame. <laughs> There's no such thing as an all-you-can-eat buffet in Italy. That's just the way it is. I asked, I, I asked him if we could order. He said, no, you're not going to order yet. First, we bring out some food. <laughs> Go back to France and pack my stuff. I thought he was gonna bring out an antipasto, a nice classy thing to do. He brought out antipasto, fried calamari, potato and gnocchi, pollo valdestano, way plain mayonnaise. Then he says, now we come, we take your order. You're not scaring me! <laughs> they brought out food for hours. We are fighting amongst ourselves. Stop ordering, this is enough. I didn't order this, I didn't order this either. They're just bringing out stuff. Let's get out of here! <laughs> Halfway through the meal, we had a friend with us, Timmy. He was too skinny, he shouldn't have come. Halfway through the meal, he died. And they kept on trying to feed him. They were smacking him. What's the matter? You don't like it? He's dead. Pass that over here. Poor Timmy. The third hour, you know how when you're full, you unbuckle your pants a little bit? Mine were down around my ankles. And they were coming with more food. And I'm trying to get out of there. I'm running out in the street with my pants down. I'll get a little exercise and I'll be back for dinner. Cause it was awesome. I like cruises for a vacation. Yeah. I was on a cruise on, in June and the cruise stopped in Jamaica. Uh, yeah. You're a good laugh a crazy lady. She's had some laughs that were good. But some of them were like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> well, listen to this then, you're gonna shit. <laughs> Have you been to Jamaica? Yeah. In Jamaica, a Jamaican gentleman came up to me and said, hey man, you want some spleef? No, I can't smoke pot. If I smoke pot, I'll eat this island. <laughs> I'm not talking about hitting a buffet or two. The island will be gone. I'll be something of folklore. I remember it came out of the jungle. The great beast. I knew by the stone look in his eyes that everything won't go be iry. He was a buffalo eater. No buffet, no cry. No. I was, I was on, a, on a cruise and I had to meet the cruise ship halfway. I perform on cruises sometimes. I really enjoy it. And yeah, I do. It's a floating buffet. <laughs> a 
So I had to meet a cruise ship in Cozumel, Mexico. Now, Cozumel is beautiful, but it's difficult to get to. I had to fly from Vegas to Cancun, Cancun to Cozumel. You can go two ways. You can go across water on a ferry. Now, that's different, a ferry. I looked at the ferry, though, and it's a Nene ferry. It's one of those ferries that tips over once a month. Everybody dies. These ferries tip over all over the world. You know what it is? Uh, they fit 50 people. They put 400 on it. It tips over and they're shocked. What happened? There's going to be an investigation. You put 400 people on it for. Don't you have a click of 4950? Wait for the next ferry, please. So the only way for me to get to Cozumel from Cancun was to take a commuter airline, Air Cozumel. <laughs> Flying's part of my job, it doesn't bother me. But little propellers on a plane, like World War II, they ask you how much you weigh. If it's that close, I ain't going. And it's nobody's business. I said about 180, I'm not sure. Well, one lady freaks out, Dios mio, el gordo es muy loco, and she runs. Good, more room for me, crazy lady. <laughs> I understand it's really hard to, hard to work in the travel industry, especially in this day and age. And comics make fun and bitch about flying. But I think, you know, I, I know that people work hard. And I, I try to be kind and gracious when I fly. But I'm in this chair, and I'm not too big, the plane's too small. <laughs> and I'm not a happy man. I've lost my cherub-like demeanor. The gentleman next to me, I'm in his lap. He's on his cell phone. Hello, mijo, I don't think I'm gonna make it. There is a big guy next to me and I can't feel my leg. So I, I try to move, cause I don't wanna kill this guy. His son will avenge him, I'll be a baggage claim in here. Hello, my name is Anil Montoya. Yo kill my father, prepare to die. The flight attendant comes by and says, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the seatbelt buckle is lodged in my ass. <laughs> and it's pretty far up there. I'm thinking it should hold me. You know, like a tail hook on an aircraft carrier. I might have shot out, but I would have sprung right back again. Then the flight attendant comes by again and says, excuse me, sir, you're in an emergency exit. Can you get that door open? What do you mean, if the plane crashes, will I open the door? Nay, nay, I'm gonna go through the door. My door's gonna be this big. Everybody's gonna wanna go out through my door. And I'll be fast, you'll think a gazelle is loose on the runway. Y'all be on fire, I'll be in the terminal eating a taco. I was on that plane. I don't remember much. I smelled smoke, and now I'm eating a taco. I was on a cruise ship in 1998 that crashed. This was in the newspaper. It was off the coast of St. Martin. St. Martin is a beautiful island in the Caribbean. It has rocks around it, big rocks. We're gonna call them bad rocks. <laughs> Everybody knows about these rocks. Christopher Columbus had a map, 1492. These are gonna be rocks right there. The captain came too close to the island and we hit the rocks. You know how like the Titanic hit an iceberg? We hit rocks. Well, why is he hitting rocks? Don't you have a rock finder thingy in the steering room? Shouldn't something flash? Rocks, rocks, rocks! My friend has a bass boat, he never hit a rock. The Titanic, I can understand, no technology. Some Irish sailor in front going, I can't say shite. It's just a lot of white is all it has. It's 1.30 in the morning, so I'm at the blackjack table. All of a sudden, I start to go like this. And I said, not screaming or anything, hey, you know, we're sinking. 
Can I get a shot of tequila over here? And everybody got mad at me. They're like, oh, you're trying to scare us. What, did I walk in here like this? <laughs> oh, oh, blackjack and sanctuary. Then the captain comes on, and the captain is a Norwegian gentleman. Norwegians have a great sailing tradition dating back to the time of the Vikings. Except I got the guy that hit rocks. And the captain comes on and goes, Hello, my name is Carsten Houston. Oh, good. Lawrence Welk is driving the boat. That's why we crashed. I want you to know that the ship is indeed taking on a little water. You mean we're sinking? A guy bringing on a case of Evian, that's taking on a little water. There's half a million gallons on deck one, I'm on deck two, that's where Shelley Winters bought it in the Poseidon Adventure. Time for me to go. People were very calm, considerate. There's always idiots though, one guy's running around, it's like the Titanic, it's like the Titanic. We're in the Caribbean, the water's 85 degrees. Jump on my back, I'll take you to Miami. John's in trouble again. <laughs> Those cruise ships, the buffets though, I don't diet on a cruise ship. Why make yourself miserable? The first time I broke a diet to go on a cruise ship, I was all, ah. Oh, don't cry for me, buffet people. The truth is I never left you. Through all my dieting, my fat resistance, I kept my promise. Don't cry for me, buffet people. Your fears, they are not valid. If you are skinny, so will the salad. Thank you. I think I'll start with that next show. The only thing is, cruise ship buffet lines are intolerably long. They have great aesthetics, like they, there's ice sculptures, and they carve stuff like, you know, a, a watermelon into a shark, and little cantaloupes or baskets with little tomato rolls. I mean, it's very nice, but little old ladies are up there freaking out. Oh, look at it, it's so beautiful! And they're taking pictures. Emily, get in there! It's, and it's a buffet line, and I'm at the end of the line. I don't want to be rude. I just want to know what's going on up there. People are starving behind you. Yeah, 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 it's a cantaloupe basket. It's very nice. Get out of the lab. Get out of the lab. I have no patience in a food line. Any line for that matter. Oh, I have to work on my patience. If I, oh, at McDonald's, if there's a long line, I jump behind the counter, I work the fries, I get it moving. I've been employed of the week twice, I don't even work there. But I take the parking space and I love having my picture up. Watch people at McDonald's, they decide what they want when they get to the front of the line. That makes me crazy. What were you doing in line, your tax returns? I knew what I wanted before I parked the car. People stare at a McDonald's menu. It's, it's McDonald's. It's the same stuff since you were six years old. Ask me anything, left to right, right to left. What do you want to know? Get out of the line! Get out of the line. People are reading the menu. They have pictures of the food. Just point. Mm. Get out of the line. Starbucks is another one. I like Starbucks. They have a good product. They're polite. They're too slow. I have to have coffee in the morning or I can't talk. My first cup can't be Starbucks. I'd be dead by the time I got to the front of that line. You got coffee back there? Yeah, well, you should drink some of that so you're moving. I have to stop at Dunkin' Donuts and get coffee to stand in line for coffee. people are staring like, I should have done that. <laughs> KFC, I don't do well in KFC lines because people stare at that menu. It's KFC. They have chicken. <laughs> you 
You know what else they got? They got chicken. You want chicken or chicken? Get out of the line. Movie theater concession line. People staring at that menu. They got popcorn, candy, soda. That's what they got. What are you looking for? Buffalo wings, prime rib? They don't got that. Get out of the line. Am I the only person in this line that has a movie to catch? That's what I would like to know. The supermarket I don't do well either. Oh good, she has coupons. You bitch. It's okay to have coupons, but I always get the lady, I have a coupon somewhere. Somewhere, I know it is. Get out of the line. And if people buy bad stuff in the supermarket, I tell them. I saw one guy buying cheap toilet paper. I said, what are you doing? That's four rolls for 89 cents. That can't be good. Don't you like yourself? I understand the need to find a bargain, but toilet paper, you buy good toilet paper. I've been really broke. I always got good toilet paper. It's a line you don't cross. It tells you everything will be all right. The bills are late, but I got good toilet paper. We have so many blessings, we don't count. We have such great toilet paper. Did you ever think of that? That's Charmin Ultra. Oh, you can make a suit out of that. Is that Versace? Charmin. No dry cleaning, I just flush it. The first time I played Tempe, Arizona, it was August. And I wasn't used to the heat. It was one of those days when it was 112. Now somehow after it's 110, it might as well be 1,000 for me. <laughs> Is that 110 for some reason, it's just a line. You open the door to the hotel and you feel <laughs> And I go out and they're picking me up for the show and it's like walking underwater. And the valet has a mist system because people die before their car comes. Here's your car. Oh. The guy picks me up, and I never met him before. He's kind of grumpy, though. And he's driving me to the club, and I'm miserable. I'm depressed. It's so hot. I should have booked this in the late fall. How, how am I going to perform? It's so hot. Oh, God. Ha, 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 ha. There's a Dairy Queen around here. <laughs> there it is! I saw the angel over the Dairy Queen. That must be St. Blizzard. <laughs> and I tell a guy driving, I say, pull over, I'm getting a milkshake. Because it's 110, you get a milkshake. I think it says that in the Weight Watchers manual. <laughs> the guy looks at me and he's rude. He goes, not now, we have to get to the show, maybe later. <laughs> So he wipes the blood from his head. <laughs> Says, you know what? I could use a milkshake too. Besides, I'm a little dizzy. I really shouldn't be driving right now. <laughs> There's only one person in front of me in line, but it's a very skinny man. Skinny people, I love you. We're all God's children. But sometimes you just can't decide. I don't know what I want. Get out of the line. Get out of the line. I had a guy in front of me go, how big is the small? It's small. The smalls are small. The mediums are medium, the larges are large. If you have to ask how small a small is, you're not hungry enough yet, come back later. Get out of the line! It's 110, I have to hear, how big is the small, is it big? And that's when I killed him, Your Honor. Case dismissed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the gym sometime. I love you, Tempe. Thanks, friends.